LinkedIn Network. I am here again with Scott Rather. I've got Scott from Scott and from previous posts. Uh, this is number two of three. And today we're going to be talking about how does someone start their personal brand? So what's important? What don't we need? And then what are some of those elements that are really nice to have? So Scott, let's start with that. So personal branding, what do you find to be pretty important for somebody who's starting out and has already done that introspection on what they want to do and what they're known for? Sure. Um, so I, I think it's a, a development of, um, maybe let's say if we break it down into maybe four pillars or four categories that we're kind of looking at in developing our brand. Um, what we want to look at is our image. What is it that we're trying to portray as to who we are as individuals? Next, it would be sort of our mission. What is it about what we enjoy doing in a work setting um, to help that company sort of get to that sort of maybe next level um, type of a thing? Basically, I mean, we could almost call it a mission statement. Maybe eventually, which we're going to talk about, it's a tagline or a catchphrase or, or something along those lines. Most companies have a mission statement. What is your mission statement, right? Um, what is your value? What is it that is really kind of important to you to the core? Um, and there's nothing wrong anymore with sharing your family as a value, your faith as a value. Back in the day, like like you had said earlier, I've been in this business for a while. Um, I would particularly say, never bring up faith and family as part of the job search process. It's something that's not important to the organization. They want to only focus on who you are, what you can do for them, etc. And I, I think we're slowly drifting away from that, particularly as we kind of get into DEI type issues and stuff like that. So it comes a little bit more into play. So we shouldn't be afraid to sort of discuss those values. Obviously there's extremes. Um, when we get into those extremes and we maybe don't want to go one way or another. Um, but, but for the most part, if it's something that's, it's pretty well centered that can resonate with other individuals, then absolutely you want to talk about your values. Um, and then finally, the final thing is what is your ultimate vision? Um, what is it that you want to accomplish? For the rest of your life, um, you know, your ambitions, those goals, et cetera, that we talked about in the last series. So, so that's sort of like the baseline that we're looking at as you're starting to, um, put sort of those thoughts into action. Awesome. So image, mission, values, vision. And sometimes somebody might not have a vision on what they want to do for the rest of their life because we're kind of figuring out who we are again after spending so much time in the uniform as a soldier, as an airman, as a sailor, as a Marine. Right. What am I as a civilian? Who is Mike? Right? Like that's, that's a pretty tough question that takes a while to answer. So we may not have that vision, uh -huh. might have a five-year plan on what we want to accomplish. Right. So I'm, I'm actually going to throw this one back at you, right? Yeah. Since, 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 since you're kind of recently out. Um, you know, that first job that you jump into, um, we're very fortunate if it is the job, but what is it about your current position that is giving you that sort of vision and value? um, you know, and it has, has this position help you discover that, um, you know, that's kind of what I'm kind of like trying to figure out as well because it is you know like sometimes you know when we're, we're trying to separate from the service and we've sort of been institutionalized it's kind of hard to say what is that and then we kind of dip our toes in things and you're like you know what i really think i like this so for you all right what is it that you really like that maybe is defining that that vision and that value yeah so i had no clue what my vision was going to be um i would say that when i got out family and religion were some of my values. Um, my image was, I'm a major, I'm an epidemiologist. There's a pandemic going on, jobs are waiting. Um, and that was not exactly the case. Um, so my mission was really find a job where I could keep a paycheck coming in. And okay, okay, and that happens I got, I got pretty darn lucky that the folks that 
found me through recruiter searches on LinkedIn, um, picked me up and they said, we don't know what we're doing with this, but we want you to grow it for us. And so I got the chance to jump right into a director role and build a practice to help people respond to and recover from COVID everywhere from international airports down to small little 12 person operations in the middle of Maine. And we got to bring that experience on the military side into the civilian sector where it's not always accessible. So it was super awesome. But during that time, I also got to see what Fusion Cell did behind the scenes, what was going on uh, with the man behind the curtain. And when they said, do you want to be a recruiter? I I had already turned down way better paying jobs because the mission here and the fulfillment and the chance to just get out there and meet people like you and have this conversation and bring value to the veteran communities that are transitioning out. I think that's pretty darn awesome. And I love what I'm doing and hopefully I get to stay doing it because this is pretty cool. Yeah. I, the, the, the word that stood out to me the most was fulfillment. Like what fills your, well, yeah, what fills your bucket? Okay. And a, a lot of times in service, we have our primary job, but we have a lot of additional duties, right? So maybe there's something in those additional duties that you had that you're like, man, I really enjoy doing that. I think I'm going to look for something along those lines as I move out of the service. Um, or it could simply be you just kind of stumble upon things. And in one way to stumble upon things is by volunteering, right? If you're sort of having a little bit of a peak interest, maybe it's in marketing or advertising or something. And you're like, well, you know what? Maybe this veterans organization, maybe I'm going to help them with their marketing plan and see if I really enjoy doing this. And if I don't, that's okay. You know, I've, I've supported the community uh, and I've learned and it's not quite for me. So let me try this. And, and that's kind of how you start to develop that sort of that, that vision, that mission, those values, and then incorporate that into an actual job search. I love it. That's, that's awesome advice. And that's why you're here because you. not only are you a veteran, but you bring a ton of experience to our lives as we're transitioning out. And you give us these nuggets of, hey, maybe it's the volunteer part. You don't have to take a paid job to figure out what you want to do. And that's, that's awesome. Well, Network, I hope you enjoyed this. It went a little bit long, but this is only part two of three. We're going to keep the, the story rolling and stay tuned. Scott, thanks. I'm looking forward to the next one. Let's keep it going.